Recently, at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, Cynthia Franca, along with Jerry Holland, hosted Creative Circle's Arts for All. There was 30 pieces of artwork on display, and the artists in attendance had the chance to talk about their pieces of art. So we have almost 30 pieces here, so it's very good. Uh, between different generations, we have like 8 years old and other 8 <laughs> sharing art, so we're very excited about that. <laughs> So our mission is exactly that, like share contributions, inspire each other, and build together an um, uh, artistic and cultural community. So we are very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much. And it was like a stream, uh -huh. it was flowing and it froze. And the patterns were just amazing. So it's, it's kind of like you have to, yeah, sometimes you find amazing patterns, but it's hard to find a composition. But um, so I'm just like going along trying to find the composition. I like the way it looked like it was flowing out of here. Mm. And um, it's, it's also like I've had two people talk to me about this piece already, and it's interesting just to see what other people see and what they think about it. And um, because. You know, I like I saw an egg shape, but other people saw other things, and just the way it flows. That's all about. I I always enter the photo contest every year, and they're more of my nature photos, like bird mm -hmm. shots. Okay, good. Um, and so they, this year, this year they put one of my uh, flickers on the cover of their magazine. And last year I had won an honorable mention, so they put a picture of Wasika on the back of um, that was my honorable mention. So it's just nice to you know, it's nice to share your photos because I do you do it and you do it isolated without anyone seeing your work. So it's really nice. It's just I don't care. I don't need to get paid as long as you know it's nice to just share. I bought uh, sunflowers and they were on my table and they last a long time. There's longevity to uh, sunflowers and as they changed each day I would pull out my pad paper 72 years old sitting there with my watercolors <laughs> and painting and just having a grand time and uh, this the one that's really intricate took me a few days to do and then I thought, that's really not how I do paintings. I like to go to my soul and find out what's in there, how I feel about sunflowers. And uh, so that's how these came into the picture. Uh, you know, what's in there? They're so joyful. In fact, mm -hmm. I read a quote um, about sunflowers. And it said, sunflowers uh, are a symbol to remind us to go to your instincts, follow your instincts, your joy, and the light inside of you. And after I read that, I thought, that's what that painting's all about. <laughs> I was roaming around looking to see if there's something interesting around the creek that I could take a picture of. And I looked out, and there's this old uh, cupboard door just resting there in the creek, I mean, reeds, and those are the kind of pictures that I hope I always find because I'm looking for angles, patterns, textures, but in unusual ways. If we go to a building, sometimes it's a wonderful door, but I think the doorknob and the way it is set or something is more attractive than the whole door. You know, so uh, this was in a show in Hudson at their art uh, society, and it won third place. So I thought, well, it's pretty good, so I should keep, working, <laughs> keep showing it. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, when we go, we travel a lot, or we did travel a lot. Uh, I would take the traditional pictures, but when on tours or anything, when the person is showing something that everybody's going to take a picture of, I kind of go around back and see what's behind this thing that's so different. So I come away with pictures that no one has that probably will be in a show like this, 
but I have to tell where it is and what it is because everybody else's has the regular form of the building or whatever. So, oh yeah, this is the such and such building. And I have to say, and this is the doorknob. <laughs> uh, soft pastel, and that's basically what I mastered was um, pastels. I used to do portraits of ballerinas, actually. I started up in Rochester, New York, and then it would take three months to do, and you know, six months, and you know, I came here, and, and I went, the heck with this, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so I started to just to have fun with it, and the color and the form, and I, I named it Blaze just yesterday. Yeah, you have to give me a name, you have to give me a name, Blaze, okay. Uh, but honestly, I'm not working in soft pastels anymore right now. Um, basically, uh, my granddaughter, she likes the ink, she's five years old, she loves to create, but I won't let her touch paint right now. And uh, But I do have some watercolors that are iridescent, and she goes to it, and I'm basically just working with them, um, the, when we had that snowfall recently, mm -hmm. and I looked outside and the branches, yeah. you know, talk about the shapes and the forms. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I took pictures and then I would bring it up and I go, this is perfect, I like this. And I just started to um, uh, draw it out on paper, on watercolor paper, and then I did the iridescence. And so my granddaughter came the next day and she wanted to create something mm -hmm. like that. And so I'm just kind of having fun with that right now. It, it's actually uh, from a French folk tone and it's called A vous dirige maman. And the, the French uh, translation of that is, Oh, shall I tell you, mother? And it goes on as far as the lyrics. What is the, Oh, shall I tell you, mother, what is tormenting me? Daddy wants me to reason like a grown up. Me, I say that sweets are worth more than reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> but that uh, the title, and tune was uh, used by other great composers like Bach and um, Liszt and Sanson and I think Haydn. And uh, so uh, what Mozart did, well, he wrote variations of it. He wrote 12 of them. And I heard it just yesterday as a coincidence when I was in the car. And what he did was, um, like it's fast, it's slow, it has a counter melody, the right hand's doing quarter notes, the left hand's doing 64th notes. So it's all these different uh, variations of it. So uh, I really got interested um, in doing this painting because I'm taking music lessons here. Oh. And he's in that particular tunes in all my uh, three books because I'm taking saxophone, clarinet, and flute woodwinds. So that tunes in all of them. Of course, it's ceramics. Uh, I took some classes last year, ceramics classes here at ACA. And when I was making this piece, because I like ceramics on the wall. I'm not, I like to make bowls, but I love to put something on the wall. So, <laughs> so I call this the missing piece rebirth. Actually, I have a missing piece here when I was making, mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, for me, this is an eye and a piece lost. And, and I just think about life and journey. Sometimes you feel like something is missing, and you are around the world looking for some piece for the puzzle you are, mm -hmm. and could be a place, could be a person, but always you are looking for something, searching the meaning of your life. Mm -hmm. So this is called missing piece and then rebirth, because mm -hmm. when you find, you rebirth in cycles of life. This is represent this. <laughs> we began about where the uh, inspiration for this particular one came from was the wonderful exhibit at MFA uh, last year which was a feast of MC <laughs> and um, so uh, what this is really a part of is an exhibit that I'm, I'm also here to share with you a wonderful venue if you have a body of work or know an artist who uh, does the Newton Free Library has uh, do you, does anyone know that particular venue no well, it's a wonderful venue because every month of the year there's a main gallery which has just been remodeled, which made me change the number of pieces I have from 26 to 33. Wow. <laughs> Make more work because it's different now. By uh, Alec Venegas, who now is in New York City with photography, and that is in her oh, last me. days. Oh. Uh, she's a very sweet teacher. And so I, I have brought a little something that she taught me to share with you. 
how when outside dogs can see light and everything. Thank you once again, Junie, my wise old teacher dog, for convincing me to go out on this cold autumn day. That was last fall. With my aging body wanting to stay inside and be warm and curl up a bit longer under the covers to hibernate. With your body equivalent to a woman of 105, with legs that sometimes cave under and cause you to stumble on the ground, you don't mind so much. With your mind like a wise ancient guru, once again you show me the way to put salve on the wounds of us all who go off and falling and feeling the cold and the dark of this life. 